The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to our webinar today. We're going to have an Ask the Experts about backing up your data, which is going to be great. I know we're all looking forward to that. I just want to remind everyone that this and all of our webcasts are always recorded. So we will have this posted on our website by the end of the day, which is Innovia.com. And without further ado, Craig, I'm going to hand it over to you. Hello, welcome to Ask the Experts. We are talking about data backups today. My name is Craig Rogging, and I will be presenting this information for you. Um, Anovia Consulting is a technical consulting firm with uh, multiple locations and over 50 team members uh, throughout the Midwest. Um, we have many customers, including Culver's, Cat Plugs, Bulldog Batteries, and other customers that rely on us for their technical needs. My name is Craig, last name is Rodney. I'm a network engineer. I've been with Inovia Consulting for 1.5 years, and I have over 18 years of experience in infrastructure support and design. The importance of backup. Uh, backup is very important because at any time, data loss can happen with your network system. Data loss sources include hardware failure, human errors, software corruption, computer viruses, theft, and hardware destruction. Any one of these can cause serious problems to your system, and data loss can result in losses of thousands of dollars in both lost time revenue as well as data recovery. How important is your data? How much can you afford to lose? Your data is the lifeblood of your business. Without this data, you flat out cannot function. Your inventory, payroll, human resources, all your documents, everything is included in, in your data. If you lose this information, not only are you losing it and have to pay for recovery, but you also lose all the time that went into creating that. So if, when you're thinking about your backup program, you need to ask yourself, how much data can I afford to lose? How many hours does it take to create the data? And what is the cost of to your business when the servers are down in the case of a cataclysmic error, um, lost communications, or productivity? Those are all questions you need to, to answer yourself. As a matter of fact, the Boston Computing Network ran a study, and it suggests that 93% of companies that lose their data center for 10 or more days file for bankruptcy within one year. Half of them file for bankruptcy almost immediately. So data loss is, very, is a very big concern and has, can have adversely affect a company's uh, running. What type of backup is right for your system, or your company? There are multiple types of backups. There's file backups and image backups. And they both have their pluses and their minuses. File backups tend to be faster. They only back up small, the data files themselves and have nothing to do with configuration settings and or uh, recovering programs, damaged programs, and other things. Image backups take an entire image of the server or computer that you're backing up, and you can restore anything from a single file all the way back to the entire server. Um, they're more flexible, but either they're a little more costly to basic to start with and to maintain. But once they're in place, they do a, a much better job of ensuring your company's data protection. File-based backup pros and cons. The pros, the file-based backups are fast. You're only backing up the data that you really need. Um, good, good situation for this would be if you have a home computer and you just want to back up photos and or Excel files. Business uh, can do that as well. If you have a road warrior who's just got a few Excel documents, things like that that need backup, backing up to a, in a file-based system isn't the worst thing in the world in that case. It's cost-effective. You're not backing up the entire thing, so there's not as much storage, and the recovery times are fairly quick. The cons are that you are limited to data files only. The recovery in the operating system, program settings, and everything else are not included. So if something, if you would have a failure, recovery would take longer because you'd have to reinstall everything from the operating system, the programs, and then the data. So there, that is something to be weighed out when you are looking at these systems. 
image-based backups. The pros of image-based is the entire image is sent out. Images can be, can be restored onto other hardware. Um, you can save time and space by creating a full it, one full image and then creating incremental images from that point forward so that the you're only going to be backing up the changes that were made. This allows you to recover at a given point in time, but still not having to have a full backup for every, every day. Um, it's a great system for doing that. Um, you can also use full uh, image-based backups to push data uh, to off-site storage locations. Um, they're flexible. You can restore everything from everything on a system down to a single file. Um, very easy to maintain and run. The cons are the initial backup does take a little bit longer because you're backing up the entire server. Um, they do require a large amount of storage space and you may need additional equipment when doing this. Um, things like local storage, a SAN, external USB drives, um, off-site settings would, would require either additional drives to physically take off or VPN to transfer the data to a off-site storage location. Where should your backups be stored? There are a variety of options for storing backups from local to the cloud as well as a hybrid, op hybrid options for these, a mixture of both hybrid, uh, local and cloud. Choosing the best solution for your company is an important decision and it's something you need to figure out in your disaster, in your disaster recovery plan. If you store in a local in-house storage, you're usually going to be storing the data on a USB or an external drive, a NAS or a SAN, tape, optical storage, or server storage. This storage is kept in your building and everything is done locally. Uh, great for quick recovery um, over time in the event of a disaster, fire, flood, the data can be lost if it's not redundant. Cloud and offsite storage. Um, you would put, uh, allow the data to be removed from your system and put off to an external site, either through some sort of cloud service company or through some sort of high-speed internet connection that would allow you to push your data from one of your locations to another another. A BDR server in-house with off-site storage is one of the best options you could do. It gives you a local backup copy. Usually with them they include uh, external cloud storage as well so you have your data both locally and in the cloud um, and they would require a remote site for high with high-speed connectivity to get them connected. If you look at local in-house storage, locally attached drives, usually what you would do is you would back up the drive, you use the server to back up to a drive, and that drive would be taken off-site. Another drive would be put in its place, and the drives would just continue to rotate until the original one came back in. That way you would always have one drive off-site in, in the event of disaster. Variations would include uh, backing up to a SAN or a NAS device and then having that device duplicate the data to an external USB drive that would then be taken off site. The pros on this is relatively inexpensive for your hardware and you control your data. The cons are that human intervention is required. Someone must be there to take those drives and devices off site every day. Um, those devices can become lost, stolen, or damaged and may need to be replaced. And data security for off-site back backups is also a concern. Um, if you don't have encryption on your data, it is potentially possible that other people, if they would get a hold of that data, could get into your data and get information that you wouldn't want them to have. Local in-house backup storage with external redundancy. Uh, that would be like a network attached storage. A network attached storage device or NAS is used to backup data from one or more servers on an internal network. It's basically a, a big hard drive system that with an uh, operating system of its own that helps to give you a location to store your data. 
external storage. Backup services are becoming more and more popular. The data is replicated securely to the cloud and maintained up there. The backup service would then monitor your backups and notify you of any issues. Hardware maintenance for data storage on an external storage site is the responsibility of the service. Remote site data storage. Data is replicated through a VPN to a storage location at a remote location. So if you would have a company that had two locations, you could push the data from one of the locations to the remote site through, the, through your VPN, a secure connection, and the data could be uh, maintained in both locations in the event of a disaster at one. You could always get your data back. The pros, local backups make for quick recovery times. You have the data right there. Offsite protects from internal disasters, flood, fire, um, that sort of thing. The cons, local equipment must be monitored to ensure quality of backup and high speed connections are necessary for pushing data across to offsite locations. A BDR backup system is one that's becoming more and more common lately. Um, they have a lot of advantages. The BDR system is designed to ensure you get a quality backup and it's redundant. Um, the data is stored locally as well as off-site, so the data gets pushed from the, your server to a BDR device. At that location, the, a backup image is stored, and that image is also sent off-site to a cloud or to a, and through a service or to a remote location that you would chose. Um, your decision is how to, on how to do that is totally up to you. Virtual images are stored on the BDR server, can be spun up also and run in the event of hardware failure. So if you have a server that goes down, the backup image that you have locally on your BDR can actually be spun up as a virtual server and you can continue your production while the uh, hardware is being repaired. Once your hardware is repaired, then you would stop production at that point, restore the image to the new server that you, that your new hardware and then just continue on on the new hardware and the backups would continue. Um, Offsite images are sent to the backup service can often be spun up as well uh, depending on the type of service you use. So in the event of a cataclysmic failure in an office location, the backups can be run on the cloud. Um, this is a limited use usually and the speeds are somewhat decre decreased but you can still get all the data you would need and run off of those virtual servers in the cloud until your hardware would become available again. And then you would push the images back down to your local hardware and restore them and begin running again from the local equipment. The pros for BDR is on-site backup images for quick recovery times. On-site images offer high quality, the ability to spin up and run a server in the event of a uh, failure. Um, it protects from internal disasters and failures, and offsite images can also be spun up in the cloud in the event of a natural disaster. The cons of them are cost, additional costs involved in BDR hardware. There are usually monthly charges for monitoring, hosting offsite images, and they do require high speed and high quality internet connections to ensure that your images are current and safe. Disaster recovery comparisons. If you use a file-based system and you do have a disaster, in order to get back to, this, to the work you need, you would need to reinstall a new operating system, reinstall all your applications, update the operate, operating system and all the applications that are associated with it, configure all the applications, put in all, all the configuration that you had, and then restore your data. Uh, downtime on a file recovery system is quite extensive in the event of, an, uh, of a disaster. Image-based backups, uh, conversely, um, you would just attach the image to a server, restore the server from the image or the last backup, and it just takes the amount of time it, that it would take for you to get new hardware in and restore the image to it. Um, downtime is uh, considerably shorter than if you, in the event of a, if you had a file-based system. BDR uh, recovery. Usually of the BDR, you can spin up a virtual image 
of your last backup in-house um, or on the cloud, so downtime is until the images are spun up. Um, you, restore, you can restore the images to the server, and once everything gets back up, you can uh, restore the, those images either from the cloud or your local backup onto the server, and everything should be fine. You'll be able to get going right away. Backup overview. overview. Disasters happen. You're going to lose data at some point um, because of how the backups are maintained. Um, that's, backups are a crucial element in your business strategy, one that should never be overlooked. It's something that definitely needs to be addressed. With proper planning, maintenance, and diligence, you can maintain a proper quality backup system within your budget that will ensure that your system and your company maintains its data and you will not lose your business data integrity. Are there any questions? We do have a couple of questions, Craig. Let's see here. Our first question, how can you be certain that off-site backups are secure? That's a, that's a problem that a lot of people have. A lot of people don't trust the government and everything else out there. Um, backup software usually has uh, encryption ability or password protection that if you're going to take data off-site and your data is sensitive in any way, just setting up your backups to encrypt the data before it goes out, we should resolve that issue. Um, once it's encrypted, there's almost no way to recover it unless you do have the password. So if you do use this, make sure that you uh, not only encrypt it, but maintain password integrity as well. You would want to make sure you know what those passwords are at all times. Okay, great. Our next question, following up on a BDR, how does it work if my server crashes? How can I just spin up a backup and keep going? Okay, the BDRs are servers that are, or in some cases they'll have just standard computers in there, that are located in-house usually, internally. So if you have a hardware failure, your server crashes for some reason, and it's a physical box, you can actually take the BDR's last backup image and convert it to a virtual machine, a virtual server, and it will be the server that it last backed up. So when it spins up, it should maintain everything. You just uh, change the DNS to point to the IP of that virtual machine, and you can actually just keep running until you have the ability to replace the hardware that has failed. Um, I've seen this work in a bunch of different cases where uh, downtime is somewhat negligible, a few hours to get everything up and going while um, in similar situations without a BDR it can you know, take days until you get that new hardware in place. So it, it's physically, it's just in a virtual world, it's a virtual server that gets spun up. Okay, great. I think we had one more question here. Yes, how often should I back up? Uh, the frequency of backups is, um, that, that, that's what most people wonder about, and the real answer is how often can you, how, how long can you afford to lose data? If you can go, f if you can lose a week's worth of data and recover from it fairly easily, a weekly backup isn't the worst thing in the world. However, most places that have backups will require more frequent backups. Um, daily or even intradaily, where they be back in at four, five, six times a day with um, incremental backups. It gives you the flexibility in doing that to um, restore from particular points. So if someone overwrites a Word document at noon, you can recover it from 11 o'clock and be right back where you were at that point in time. Um, so you know how often you back up really depends on your needs and how long you can go with, with losing your data. Um, it also affects uh, redundancy would also be part of that too is how long do you want to keep your backups and that would be how back how far back can you uh, maintain them and that's a question of how long do you need the backups to be stored and how much uh, 
space to have available for storage. Great, Craig. Well, that is the end of our questions. So I just want to remind everyone that we do record all of our webinars. So this one, along with all the others, will be up on our website by the end of the day. That is Innovia.com. And Craig, I just want to thank you for a great presentation, letting us know kind of what options we have and what to look at when we're considering backing up our technology. Thank you, Evie. I appreciate that very much. And thank you for allowing me to present this today. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you at our next webinar.